Hello, everyone. This is uh, Jana Novakova Stara from the Czech Wellness Institute. And I was recently recording a short video about the reality of the corporate health and wellness programs in my country. It was recorded for the Global Human Capital Productivity Conference to side of the source uh, and the, when I was preparing it I ended up collecting loads and loads of materials that I couldn't put in that short five minute video so I thought of making a longer edition of it and sharing with uh, sharing it with you um, maybe hoping for some feedback if you know uh, some more details or have your own experiences from the Czech um, uh, check uh, nature, <laughs> check nature of health and wellness programming. Please uh, feel free to share it in comments or in emails. I will be glad to hear because the whole topic of um, wellness programming for uh, working people uh, is um, an interesting and endless, endless array of topics and reasons and realities. So it was also interesting for me to really look into it. And I did a little survey among my friends who work in um, global companies, in smaller companies, who own companies. Uh, and it was uh, really, an, really, in some cases, an eye-opening conversation, seeing what is happening and what is on the other end not happening in this, um, in this context. So where to start? I have my notes here, so I will be here and there uh, glimpsing to the paper. Uh, okay, so the reality is uh, the reality of this video is related to the Czech Republic. Czech Republic is a relatively small country in the heart of Europe. I believe we have 14 million uh, inhabitants and our neighbors are on one side Germany and Austria and on the other side Slovakia and Poland. And in our relatively recent history, only over like 30 years ago, we have opened our borders to the Western world, which meant that many international co uh, companies and corporations have entered what used to be Czechoslovakia then as a new market, very fresh because we didn't have any privately owned companies uh, for many decades before. And many new things happened. So me being a small child back then, I could uh, grow up on Happy Meals drinking Coca-Cola, which I luckily didn't do. Uh, but uh, uh, since I remember, there was uh, an influence of international companies and many small companies that have uh, started or were created in these years after the revolution have later been sold uh, to an investor from abroad. So I don't uh, know the real numbers, but uh, there is a large number of international companies coming into our country and bringing with them uh, what is uh, now in my talk uh, relevant, the experiences and the and the ways how to um, build a program oriented uh, to health and well-being of the employees because uh, somehow even though we used to have some programs um, or uh, the factories and the larger systems of employees have been designed around not only the, the working hands of the work um, of the employees but also for the larger whole but with the with the revolution all this was somehow scattered and we were really building many things from scratch so uh, i would say that the reality of um, corporate health and well-being programs is now really the domain of international companies who bring in the programs from abroad. And, but in recent years, there is a growing trend, I would say, which I am seeing among um, innovative, modern businesses, startup companies, um, and all the progressive IT businesses growing heavily uh, around, around here, um, where the current trend of um, 
wellness, well-being, health promotion, being fit, being good, being productive, being effective is uh, really a daily bread of the people, of the owners, of the managers, of the employees. So it is becoming normal, but um, the bottom line for the majority of our uh, working population is that um, unless people work for an international or a very modern company, uh, they have never heard of a health program. We just don't have it here. The reasons, the reasons can be very logical because unlike US where the history of workplace wellness programs uh, started, I believe in the 80s and is really strong, uh, here in um, our uh, system, uh, we don't have the floating rate of health insurance, which means that regardless of the health state, uh, the amount of money the employer gives to the insurance company or the state um, is equal. So that really doesn't motivate an employer to invest in a, in a health-oriented program. So that could be one of the reasons. And then also on the other uh, uh, on the other side stands the employee, who can typically react uh, with saying no to the offer, uh, with not not accepting the program because um, maybe it comes from our history. For over hundreds of years, there has always been some other king, some other uh, union, some other country ruling over our uh, tiny, tiny kingdom and tiny nation. So when a thing is presented as an order or if something things feels like we should be doing, uh, the typical response is no. <laughs> We don't want to. It doesn't feel like it would be good for us. So it is your order, you keep it, and we will find some other ways around it. Uh, Nicola Shuhai would be maybe a name that came to my mind as a, one of the story heroes who just finds a way uh, around uh, the orders, around the sovereign power, something like a, a Robin Hood, who just supports uh, the poor, steals from the rich. Not that our employees would be stealing, I don't mean, mean it like that. But um, somehow these characters embody our relationship to an order, to something we have to do. And if we have to do it, we just don't want. And personal health is really seen like something that is just ours and that we don't bring it into um, into yeah into the workplace that's my thing and at work I work and I care of my health somewhere else and it goes also back to the employer like if you if an employee has a health issue it is his responsibility to take care of it so we don't really have programs that would support smoking cessation in a longer run maybe uh, we would give a workshop but not an ongoing support mm, on that well uh, on the other hand uh, to not to say that the corporate uh, workplace programs don't exist here at all what has become somewhat normal are team building programs team building programs where uh, how to say well team also there is a whole array of topic uh, relate uh, topics related to what is team building and what is not i have been myself working as a team building agency and was teaching classes about team building uh, at the university and I was trying to put across the, the message that team building is a process that is an ongoing thing that the team including the managers and the corporate culture and the employees and their needs is an ongoing debate that uh, aims at the, maybe say proper functioning of the of the whole or in our terms now the well-being of all that everybody has what they uh, uh, what they need for their work that they feel safe and respected in the workplace and a team building can be a way to get there so very often we would be on this level of 
talking about team building, but in some uh, unspoken terms, be talking about the well-being of the team, how to make the people feel well so that they can do their job without being disturbed uh, by other things. Uh, from the perspective of the employee, it means that it's everybody goes there, so I go too. And some of the programs are really having fun and then getting drunk in the, uh, in the evening, getting good food and have a good memory. Well, of course, this can also uh, go wrong with uh, too much of alcohol. And this is really a matter of one team to another. Uh, but um, when I take it back to the uh, well-being and health context, it is seen that, yeah, it's good for the team and I go. It is not meant uh, as something that is touching me and my health and my own well-being. On the similar on the similar note are the corporate social responsibility programs, which are also becoming very well accepted by the employees. When the employees can really, you know, use their time or some of their you know, some of their money to make something nice for people in need, this has a good and very positive feedback from the employees. I was talking to a friend who in their company can every year dedicate a certain amount of money to a charity of their choice which is like yeah wow so they support um, a child hospice here in our town so this these ways how the goodness can be happening are and also in this case in a in a very larger scale are growing and growing but still as i said they have no real connection to the personal health so i have myself not seen a comprehensive workplace program that would uh, start with a biometric screening hra assessment uh, that would uh, provide some longer fitness oriented or smoking cessation classes or Weight Watchers program in a longer run. What is um, becoming normal in, um, in the international companies are something like wellness or health fairs, where for one day the employees are invited to a set of workshops about time management, stress management, massage uh, or soft skills, communication, these types of workshops or that in the workplace there are created like areas for doing the good things like there in one of my friend's office there was a sleeping room one office was turned into a gym uh, there was a playstation in the corner and they were receiving healthy snacks every day uh, true to say if this friend of mine works in IT where uh, these employee benefits are really growing the most uh, compared to other professions. Uh, so they are really well taken care of. Um, and maybe a comment I would add to this, that these things are seen as um, maybe an employee benefit, not a comprehensive program that would guide one's uh, health uh, and wellness uh, journey towards a healthier self and this when i was discussing this with this colleague of mine he said that uh yeah the sleeping room is nice uh, but you don't get you don't go there during the day because during the day you're expected to work right and that he said that many of the play areas are also not being used because it's not the culture uh the culture in the czech workplace and i believe this goes global is work so when in your working hours, you're not working, so what you're doing? And these can start really other soft, um, uh, sticky situations in the team, comments, weird looks. So this uh, uh, was a really nice, um, how to say, an example for me to think of how much really the wellness and health programming needs to go not only to the places and the areas, not only to the activities that people should be doing there, uh, but also to the overall culture of how we live from day to day in the, in the, in the office. Uh, 
and then yeah after 2020 all of this has totally changed so uh, so it will be interesting to see how much of this finds another way through um, the changed conditions of uh, yeah post pandemic uh, work so maybe uh, to wrap up with some ideas or thoughts to inspire you when you are creating a program for Czech workforce, um, Czech employees, um, my first invitation would be really go and talk to the people, understand uh, them, understand their reality, what is it they're, they are doing in their daily life, because um, what I have heard is that many of the programs really take form of a flyer hanging somewhere in the kitchen or in the in the bathroom saying yeah be happy or be mindful or download this app it will help you be more mindful it's like aha maybe what would and the comment of my colleague was yeah maybe what would be more mindful was to get to have less work or to be less bullied by my boss uh, for checking something online mm. It's always this, uh, how to say, a thin line, how to get the program accepted or ignored. So I would say, yeah, talk to people, understand them, their daily realities, be it now the daily realities of people working from home with their kids, homeschooling. That is something to be mindful of and to respect and to take as, as a given fact and also then if you're building a program for multicultural communities try to understand the cultures uh, involved in um, because this really goes deep into people and it prevents this no response and then <laughs> yeah talk with the individuals if you are on the level of the team leader who can get this far or this close to people because nothing feels as uh, plastic as a general flyer about health and well-being with uh, that is created for somebody else but it's hanging in our uh, in on our walls that was a, a very specific comment from a friend of mine because Czech culture is really homogeneous. Most of the people have my color of skin, my color of hair, and we are not yet a multicultural community. Uh, and unless uh, the, com the company is uh, uh, really attracting many international workers, majority of the workers will be Czech. So if all the flyers are created with the pictures of people of all colors, this is not nothing um, uh, racist, but it is just reflecting back that mm, this program was not created for us because this is not us on the paper. Uh, so one of the very specific requests from the people I was talking with was, please at least use our pictures on on, the, on our marketing or not marketing, but health promoting uh, flyers. That was a very specific and very concrete and very logical uh, and to me surprising um, comment that I have heard and collected. So if there is a way uh, in your system to tailor make a program or co-create the program with the people you're working with please give it the effort maybe give them just the choice to change the pictures uh, on the well-written flyer be it the most or you you know your ways you know what you're creating uh, so yeah make it make it for the people not for who else are we creating programs for? Oh, maybe I will leave this up um, in the air as an um, as an uh, as a philosophical question to uh, maybe reflect on uh, after this video. 
and who are we creating our programs for? Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope it uh, shared some mm, insights, some point of view that I have collected uh, here uh, from my network and from my experience. So if you have any comments or experiences uh, um, or arguments, please uh, read back to me. I will be glad to hear from you and to learn more myself. Yeah, thank you very much and um, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>